Hello students. Hope all of you are thorough with the last concept what I have taught. That's about the basic terms which is in connection with the conduction of nerve impulse or a nervous activity. Now let us start learning about the conduction of nerve impulse. I think in the previous video I taught you that impulse is nothing but a, a wave of irritability or a wave of disturbance that sweeps over the nerve cell. Yes children, here you can find I have drawn the axon of the nerve cell. So axon of the nerve cell is also known as a nerve fiber. So in the first diagram you can find that I am drawing plus sign on the outer membrane of the axon and negative sign on the inner membrane of the axon. As we have already learnt in the circulatory system chapter that in between the cells we find the tissue fluid that is in between the nerve cells we find the tissue fluid which comprises a number of ions and a number of proteins so this is the inner part of the axon or a nerve fiber so this is the inner part of the axon or a nerve fiber so whenever the nerve fiber or a nerve cell does not receive any stimulus or what do we call it as when a nerve cell is in the resting condition It means without receiving any stimulus. Children, we know that stimuli is an agent that brings about a change in the activity of an organism, what we have learned in the previous video with so many illustrations. So, whenever a nerve cell is in the resting condition, we find the sodium ions on the outer membrane of the axon or a nerve fiber and potassium ions in the cytoplasm of the axon. So this is the general arrangement of ions on either side of the axon membrane. So I said on the outer side of the axon membrane we find more of sodium ions. Within the cytoplasm of the axon we find more of potassium ions so so during the resting condition this is how there is a arrangement of sodium ions followed by potassium ions so in this condition we call this condition as a normal condition or we name it as a polarized state of a nerve fiber this children so what is the meaning of a polarized state? It is a condition in which the nerve cell is under rest during which we find more of sodium ions on the outer part of the axon membrane and more of potassium ions within the cytoplasm of the axon. What do we call it as? Polarized state. 
the speciality of a nerve cell is that it gets excited on receiving the stimulus so whenever the nerve cell receives the stimulus we know that we have a number of dendrites we have a number of dendrites reaching all the finest parts of the body so on receiving the stimulus to the dendrites and into the cyton it is conducted into the nerve fiber or a axon so on receiving the stimulus so a stimulus can be of a various types what it can be a stimulus can be a mechanical stimulus in case if a child has a fall if he is hurt it can be a mechanical stimulus it can be a electrical shock that is electrical impulse fine so whenever a nerve fiber or a nerve cell comes in contact with the various stimuli it can be even even chemical stimulus remember i have taught you in the previous video that you run to the kitchen when mama is preparing certain tasty food that is maybe a chemical stimulus so on receiving the stimulus we find a immediate change or you can say that the nerve cell gets excited the nerve cell gets excited on receiving a stimulus stimulus can be in the form of a mechanical electrical or a chemical or it can be physical also so what is the meaning of it gets excited in the sense the axon membrane becomes permeable what do you mean by that it allows the movement of sodium ions from outer membrane into the cytoplasm of the axon so i said that is the reason i said the nerve cell gets excited on receiving the stimulus so let us consider this part as a a let us see what are the changes that occurs when it receives the stimulus so immediately i said the axon membrane becomes permeable to sodium ions so immediately there is a influx or a inward movement of sodium ions hence the cytoplasm of the axon or the portion inside the axon now it becomes positive due to inward movement of sodium ions so thus there is a inward movement of sodium ions in part a whereas the remaining portion whereas the remaining part of the nerve fiber remains as it is so only in a part a you can find this influx of sodium ions into the inner membrane of axon due to which you will find the positive ions within the axon so in this region there is a loss of polarity so the nerve fiber or a nerve cell is no more in a resting condition it is excited and this region we name it as a depolarized state so only a part of the nerve fiber or axon becomes depolarized due to the influx of sodium ions so thus this portion of a loses its polarity it becomes depolarized now this portion of the depolarized state now it acts as a stimulus now this portion acts as a stimulus to the adjoining region to the adjoining region of the axon or a nerve fiber 
so immediately there is a movement of stimulus or a transfer of stimulus from part A to part B so let us call this part as a B and this as a C so you can say that the first depolarized state or a depolarized region now it acts as stimulus which activates the adjoining region of the axon to lose its polarity or to become excited okay so now what happens in the adjoining region now in the adjoining region again there is a permeability of a sodium ions into the inner membrane of axon due to which now the adjoining region loses its polarity so this region now it becomes depolarized so this region becomes depolarized whereas the C part C part remains as it is so thus there is a transfer of impulse or you can say there is a transfer of this wave from part A to part B from part A to part B now the part B becomes depolarized due to the inward movement of sodium ions whereas in the next region again you will find the polarized state or the normal condition right so when this region or a B becomes depolarized at the same time at the same time what do we find in the previous region that is in the A in the previous region there are certain sodium pump channels there are certain sodium pump channels which enable the sodium ions again to move back into the outer part of the axon so there is an outward movement of sodium ions due to which you will find again number of sodium ions on the outer side in the sense the nerve fiber is coming back to the resting condition or a normal condition so this part of the axon which returns back to the normal condition we call this region as a repolarized region we name it as a repolarized region so thus you can say that there is a wave of there is a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization now again this depolarized state acts as a stimulus which makes the adjoining region of the axon to lose its polarity again due to which there is an inward movement of sodium ions and this region becomes depolarized so when this region becomes depolarized at the same time the previous region attains the repolarized condition again due to the outward movement of sodium ions so thus you can say that there is always a wave of there is always a wave of depolarization there is a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization so there is a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization depolarization followed by a repolarization so we call this as a conduction of impulse so how do we define the word conduction of impulse so conduction of nerve impulse is nothing but it's a wave of it's a wave of depolarization first it is depolarization followed by repolarization that sweeps over the nerve cell if you remember 
in the previous video I have taught you it is an electrical disturbance that sweeps over the nerve cell so here you can see there there is a inward and outward movement of sodium ions due to which there is a conduction of nerve impulse children this conduction of nerve impulse it is due to the active transport of sodium ions it is brought about by the active transport of sodium ions so in fact you will study in the earlier classes we have certain sodium channels here which enable the movement of sodium ions in and out of this nerve fiber so what is the meaning of active transport whenever there is a word active is used in the active transport it means there is a utilization of energy in the form of ATP so for the movement of the sodium ions into the cell out of the cell there is always a usage of energy currency of the cell that is a adenosine triphosphate what we have learnt in the earlier classes so you can call it as a this movement of sodium ions is actually known as a sodium pump which is actually the active transport of sodium ions which is brought about by utilizing energy in the form of a ATP so thus the mitochondria found in the axon provides the energy that is ATP for the movement of the sodium ions in and out of the nerve fiber yes children so thus you can say that conduction of nerve impulse is nothing but a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization so let us quickly recall the conduction of nerve impulse yes so when a nerve fiber is in a normal condition or what do we call it as a resting condition which is known as a polarized state so in a polarized state we find the sodium ions outside the axon membrane and potassium ions more of potassium ions within the axon so this normal condition or resting condition is known as a polarized state on receiving the stimulus the nerve fiber gets excited due to which the axon membrane becomes permeable it allows the inward movement of sodium ions due to which so this region of the axon or a nerve fiber loses its polarity what do we call it as a depolarized region or a depolarized state so which acts as a stimulus to the adjoining region so again we find the depolarized state in the adjoining region at the same time the previous region undergoes repolarization in which the sodium ions move out and this movement of sodium ions in and out is actually brought about by the ATP so we call it as a sodium pump or a active transport of sodium ions so thus if you remember I taught you in the earlier video so we have a specialized nerve cells what do we call it as a receptors from receptors impulse there is a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization arising from the nerve cells from the sense organ conducted to the brain or the spinal cord so again there is a conduction of impulse to brain or a spinal cord from a brain and spinal cord there is again a conduction of impulse to the effectors so if you remember what are effectors effectors are nothing but the muscles or glands which on receiving the impulse from the brain undergo contraction or they secrete substances so thus you can say there is a pathway of conduction of impulse from one part of the body that is from the sense organ to the CNS central nervous system which is nothing but brain or a spinal cord from central nervous system to the effectors that is a muscles or a glands 
Yes, children. Now let us learn about the types of neurons. There are three types of neurons. So, what are those three types of neurons? Those three types of neurons are known as a sensory neurons, sensory neurons, followed by association neurons and motor neurons. So thus you can say that there are three different kinds of neurons. Sensory neurons, association neurons and motor neurons. Here you can see the diagram of all the three different kinds of neurons. So what is the function of sensory neurons and where do we find them? Yes children, this is the sensory neuron which arises from the receptors, which arises from the receptors or you can say the sense organs. So we find this sensory neurons which are connected to the receptors or the sense organs right such as your eye ear nose or your tongue followed by skin so in all these sense organs we find this sensory neurons so children here you can see that Sensory neuron has a cyton. This is the cyton. Right? It has a axon. This is the axon. Now this axon branches into two parts. So this is one of the axon which is entering into our spinal cord which is a part of the central nervous system. This is one more branch which is entering into our sense organs. So here you can say that Axon is actually branching into two parts. One branch is entering into the central region that is to the spinal cord or to the brain. The other region is peripheral, entering into the peripheral part or to the sense organs. And this structure is nothing but the dendrites. And these are the terminal branches. So what is the function of a sensory neuron? Sensory neuron conducts impulses from receptors to the central nervous system. It conducts impulses from receptors to the central nervous system. And if you observe here, the cyton is not branched. We find the axon which is branched into two parts entering into central region and to the peripheral region at the end of this peripheral axon we find the dendrites which is in contact with the stimulus which is in contact with the stimulus yes the next neuron is the association neuron which is also known as a connecting neuron so the other name for association neuron is connecting neuron. So here what I have drawn using red sketch is the connecting neuron. As the name indicates it is connecting two different neurons. So this is the third type of a neuron known as a motor neuron. So what is the function of the association neuron the association neuron conducts impulses from sensory neuron to the motor neuron 
so this is the function of sensory neuron so what is the function of association neuron association neuron conducts impulses from the sensory neuron sensory neuron to the motor neuron children in case if they ask you the function of association neuron you have to be very clear it conducts impulses from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron if they ask you location so this is the function that is a conduction of nerve impulses becomes the function in case if they ask you the location in case if they ask you the location you can write it connects the sensory neuron to the motor neuron now let us learn about the third type of a neuron that is a motor neuron what is the function of motor neuron the motor neuron conducts impulses from association neuron to the effectors children in the earlier video we have learned about the effectors which are nothing but the muscles or glands on receiving the impulse which undergo contraction that is withdrawing your hand from the hot cooker or secrete the substances right so what is the function of motor neuron so motor neuron conducts impulses conducts impulses from association neuron to the effector children again i repeat so when they ask you about the function you have to use the word conduction of impulses from and to which i have taught you even in the circulatory system chapter along with that never use the word connect for function so if you write the connect word it becomes the location so what is the location of motor neuron it is located between from the between the central nervous system and effectors or you can say it connects the association neuron to the effectors but the function is it helps in the conduction of nerve impulses from you can also write it as a cns from the central nervous system to the effectors or from association neuron to the effectors so thus these three are the different kinds of neurons children if you remember there is a narrow gap there is a narrow gap between the terminal branches of one neuron to the dendrites of the other neuron known as a synapse right so the terminal endings have a swollen parts which have a chemical substance that is a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine so when the wave of depolarization followed by repolarization finally reaches the terminal branches the acetylcholine is released into the synapse which is broken down by the enzyme and which transfers or conducts impulses to the dendrites so thus this synaptic cleft or a synapse helps in the jumping of impulses from terminal branches of one neuron to the dendrites of the other neuron again you can find a one more synapse here in between the association neuron and the motor neuron so you can say this is a pathway of conduction of impulses from receptors to the cns from cns to the effectors yes children now let us learn about nerves so just now we have learned about the neurons now let us learn about the nerves please don't have a confusion between neurons and nerves yes what are nerves from our central nervous system 
that is from our brain and the spinal cord we have a number of wire like structures which are emerging so these wire like structures which are emerging from brain and spinal cord are known as a nerves which are conducting impulses to all the parts of the body they carry the impulses from receptors to the brain from brain to the effectors the same way these nerves which are emerging from the spinal cord they also carry impulses from receptors to the spinal cord then to the brain from brain to the spinal cord and from spinal cord to the effectors so they are the wire like structures which are emerging from the brain or the spinal cord or you can call it as a thread like structures there are three types of nerves known as sensory nerves followed by motor nerves and mixed nerves so what do you mean by nerve a nerve is nothing but it's a bundle of nerve fibers or you can say it is a bundle of axons of the separate neurons axons of the separate neurons or you can say it is the bundle of it's a bundle of nerve fibers children just now i taught you the other name for axon is the nerve fiber right so you can say that a uh, nerve is nothing but a bundle of nerve fibers or a bundle of axons of the separate neuron so this is the axon of one neuron axon of the second neuron axon of the third neuron axon of the fourth and fifth so like this you have a bundle of a uh, nerve fibers of different neurons which is enclosed by one more tubular sheath so when it is enclosed by one more tubular sheath we call this as a nerve so how do we define the word nerve a nerve is a bundle of or a set of axons of the separate neurons axons of the separate neurons enclosed by a tubular sheath which is enclosed by a tubular sheath so this structure is known as a nerve right so children here you can see a bundle of match sticks have taken so each match stick is nothing but one single nerve cell you can compare it to a single nerve cell so this is one single nerve fiber this tip you can compare it to the cyton so you have a number of nerve fibers a number of match stick and each match stick you can compare it to the one single nerve fiber so here you can see it's a bundle of nerve fibers of a separate neurons which is enclosed by a tubular sheath you can compare this rubber band to a tubular sheath then we call it as a nerve so what is the meaning of the word now sensory nerve before that now again these axons of these nerves have a insulating sheath each one of them have a insulating sheath similar to the nerve cell so what is the role of this insulating sheath you can say that there is no jumping of impulses between the adjacent axons or you can say that the myelin sheath acts as a insulating sheath it acts as a insulating sheath and prevents and prevents the 
mixing of impulses prevents the intermixing of impulses between the intermixing of impulses between the adjacent between the adjacent adjacent nerve fibers yes children this is one of the question asked for the give reason why there is no intermixing of impulses between the adjacent axons in a nerve just now i told you so every single axon is covered by a myelin sheath so the myelin sheath the myelin sheath acts as a insulating sheath so thus prevents the intermixing jumping of impulses from one axon to the other axon right yes now what is the meaning of a sensory nerves so what is the function of sensory nerves so it is similar to the sensory neurons so sensory nerves are again nothing but they are made up of they are comprising the sensory nerve fibers they are made up of sensory nerve fibers yes children here in this diagram you can find one nerve fiber so if you have a bundle of nerve fiber if i draw a number of nerve fibers of different sensory neurons so this structure becomes the sensory nerve so you can say that sensory nerves contain sensory nerve fibers carrying impulses from receptors to the cns so when you write the definition of a sensory nerve you should say they contain the sensory nerve fibers be very careful you cannot write it as a neurons because the nerves only comprise the nerve fibers or the axons that is the reason i said sensory nerves contain sensory nerve fibers conducting impulses from receptors to the cns whereas motor nerves again the motor nerves are nothing but the nerve fibers of these motor neurons so you can say that you can say that so motor nerves contain contain motor nerve fibers so what do they contain they contain motor nerve fibers motor nerve fibers conducting impulses from cns to the effectors so how do we define the word motor nerves motor nerves comprise the motor nerve fibers carrying impulses from cns to the effectors how about the mixed nerves how about the mixed nerves mixed nerves actually contain the mixed nerves actually contain both they contain both sensory and they contain both sensory and motor nerve fibers they contain both sensory and motor nerve fibers where exactly we have this in fact every nerve that is emerging from the spinal cord is actually a mixed nerve because they contain both sensory and motor nerve fibers yes can you just guess the example for a sensory nerve one of the example for a sensory nerve is yes a uh, nerve which is emerging from the eye entering into our brain carrying impulses to the brain right okay again one more one example for a motor nerve the same set of neurons from a brain conducting impulses to the eye making your eyeball to rotate so which is carried out by the motor nerve carrying impulses from the brain to the eye making your eye to rotate the eyeball right how about a mixed nerve i said every 
spinal nerve is a mixed nerve because it contains both sensory and motor nerve fibers how do we call it as a containing both sensory and motor nerve fibers yes children in fact in fact yes i'm just drawing a rough diagram so this is the sensory nerve this is the motor nerve arising from receptors entering into the cns so from cns we have we have association neuron from cns we find a nerve which is entering into the effectors right yes children here this is the region or you can say at a particular junction we have both nerve fibers that is sensory nerve fibers and motor nerve fibers so which actually separate out later on forming a dorsal root and a ventral root so this junction which contains both sensory nerve fibers and motor nerve fibers we call this as a mixed nerve so all those nerves which are emerging from the which are emerging from the spinal cord are known as a mixed nerve because at a particular junction they have both sensory nerve fibers and motor nerve fibers this can be one of the question asked for the give reason why every spinal nerve is a mixed nerve the answer is because it contains both sensory nerve fibers and motor nerve fibers children along with that if you observe the sensory neuron comprises the cell body it comprises the cell body which does not have a dendrites which i have taught you just now the dendrites were very close to the receptors so we had this cyton so we find this cluster of cytons we find this cluster of cytons so here you can see this is the cluster of cytons or you can say the aggregate of or aggregates of cytons so whenever you have this aggregates of cytons collectively we call this as a ganglion so what do we call it as ganglion so every spinal nerve if you look at the sensory part of the spinal nerve you will find a ganglion you will find a ganglion so you may find a number of ganglion in the spinal nerves so ganglion is the singular form ganglia is the plural form so how do we define the word ganglion ganglion is the aggregate of cell bodies to which the nerve fibers enter and from which the nerve fibers emerge yes children i repeat the definition how do we define the word ganglion ganglion is a aggregates of cell bodies or cytons to which the nerve fibers are entering and from which the nerve fibers are emerging children go through the textbook learn the definitions thoroughly go through every single line so that it becomes more clear to you so learn till here be at home take care thank you